Yo, what's going on guys? It's Josh back again with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna actually be going through with this motor and I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble it, check out the hall sensors and possibly order them and go ahead and replace them. I haven't seen anybody do it yet on these MY10D motors, I think that's what they're called. But I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this one because this one was brand new, probably about, no, I say about 32 miles on this motor right here and it smoked up, but I think it's the hall sensor fell themselves. So we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this one and see what the problem is. And if it's the hall sensors, I'll order them and then I'll go through a tutorial of how to replace them. And this one is gonna get a uh, the Sabaton controller. I'm gonna rewrap it. And then my original bike, which is this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrap it. Slap the 6,000 watt back in there. And this one's gonna get the QS motor. This one's getting a 6,000 watt swap as well as this one here, which is my buddy's. So we're doing a build on his right now, actually. So that's his Instagram right there. And I do have this little mini, mini bike, the baby of these, all these three, the baby. And this one has a 4,000 watt and I still gotta wait for the battery to come in. So we're gonna have a video on that one. Uh, I already installed the motor. I had a it, it basically it fit but you had to redrill the holes because it had a a 250 watt and it was just a pain in the ass but I got it in and everything's gonna fit it's probably gonna run for the most I think about 45 to an hour uh, 4,000 watts just because how small it is I don't want to damage any of the body because you really can't find those so I definitely do not want to hurt that body so this one's 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, 6,000 rebuild. This one's going to probably be with the QS motor. I want to hit between 18,000 watts on this one. This one's going to be 6,000. And this one I'm thinking of getting rid of because, like I said, it just sits here. And I can fit one, two bikes here. And I don't even use this anymore. You know, I built it for the channel and it just sits here. So I might end up chopping up the frame, taking the hub off, the controller, putting it away, maybe use it for another build. But yeah, guys, let's get into this teardown. And I'm not gonna just show you guys the disassemble on that. You know, it's pretty easy. It's the same thing as every other motor. You have the footprint, take the footprint off, and you just bring the motor in. So I'm gonna bring you guys in here, and I'm gonna have you guys up here, and you guys are gonna be watching me disassemble it and checking out what the issues are is so this is the my10 my1020d brushless 3000 watt nominal 6000 watt peak motor they have a variety of brands they're all the same thing so usually what i do is uh these are the main tools you'll need which is going to be a pair of channels or some vice grips or something like that. You need a stubby maybe, but you mainly just need a Phillips. So the reason you have this, the pliers or channels, is in case one of these screws wanna be an S and it just strips out when you're trying to take it. All right. Let's see. Okay, this one broke loose, so I I'm just broke loose one right now. So let's go ahead and take it out. I do recommend you getting a sharpie, making a straight line from the front face, just in case you disassemble the front to replace bearings, and as well as for the rear. And you can tell which was the front and rear, you can't get these plates mixed up, so. And now for the hall sensors. The hall sensors are gonna be located in between here 
You have one, two, that's two, oh my bad, one, two, three. So you have a total of three. So let me go and zoom in as possibly as far as I can, and I'll bring the motor up to you. So, and actually, let me get a flashlight real quick. So, the hall sensors are going to be right here. You can see you got one there where those little black cables are. You got one here. You have one in the center here. Oh, let me show you guys. So you got one, two, and then three on this side. Those three wires. They all take three wires. They usually fail. Why do the hall sensors fail? Mainly it's going to be because of heat warp. So like this one, like I said, this one was brand new. Usually if I take the time, which most of the time I would, I take the time and I break in the motor. So I do a process. Uh, they come with those speed switches. I usually knock those speed switches probably to number two because you have three modes on the three gear selector. So I usually leave it in two and I max it out like you're riding it. So you don't send too much power to the motor and basically premature the, the components, which they should put that in the description you know you gotta wait a certain amount of miles to go this fast or whatever to push this much power and and the other thing as well is the vent ports if i probably would have had the vent ports drilled out i wouldn't be going through this issue so usually what people do is i'm not sure actually i don't know if people do this but the way i'm gonna start doing it because all the new motors i'm getting which i just ordered I think I'll order like three or four. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill all these out. So I will disassemble the motor. That's why I said to leave a black mark. So you guys can identify and put the, just to make sure to put the casing back together in the direct order how you disassembled it. Um, so these I will be drilling out to, I think if I'm not wrong, I think it was one eighths. Let me look at my drill bit for a sec. Okay. So here I have a 3 16th drill bit. Let's see 3 16th there. 3 16th. So those are the ones, like the inner ones when it comes to this portion here. These will get bored out just a little bit bigger since you are running to limited space and you don't want to come in contact where the bearing is being held in the center. These will get drilled out to a little bit bigger than 1 8 but this is a 3 16 bit and I will not be drilling 3 16 Reasons why is there's no need to drill that big. You could go bigger, obviously, it'll benefit you still. Um, and the hall sensors, let me I have a hall sensor here actually, so let me go ahead and show you exactly what a hall sensor looks like for these motors. This is a small little thing here. And the number that's on here, if you guys are curious, it is 461A. Let me get this last number over here. 93704. So it's 461A, 93704. So that's the, that's at least that's what the part number is here. So the one I'm actually ordering, which are gonna be these here. I'm gonna go ahead and order these. They should come in soon. And if I'm not wrong, when I did the temperature check before the hot sensors failed, it was at 185, 170, something in between there if I'm not wrong. Um, and these new hall sensors, they go up to 302 degrees max. So I have the new hall sensors here. Let me go ahead and pull them out. These are the honey wells. Go ahead and grab one for you guys real quick. And the part number is, yep, they're honey well. You're not going to see them, they're way too small, and I don't think this GoPro is going to pick this up, but it's S41618. 
So let's see. I just want to match them up real quick. Yep. And let me go ahead and get some cutters and let's go ahead and start replacing these. Okay. So you have it's just this flat edge. I don't know if you guys catch that, I can't really see the top, but they have tapered edges and then the other side is just straight flat. The tapered edges is what's going to face the hall sensor or the motor itself, the tapered edges. And they just basically, they just slide in. So, nothing really to it. So now, we're going to go ahead and remove, there's heat shrink actually on here. Okay guys, so I forgot to throw in this part, but as I'm soldering here, so there's three wires, they're going to be yellow, blue, and green. Uh, there's going to be a negative and positive on each hall sensor, and each color goes into each hall sensor. So, say for a fact you have one hall sensor, you'll have a red and black and a green, and then you'll have the other two, so which will be the yellow and blue that will be the other two colors so just to make it easier just go ahead and once you remove the heat shrink that's covering the leads just go ahead and take a picture before you remove them you could either cut them off with snippers or you could just go ahead and unsolder them uh i didn't realize actually in the video when i was doing it i had totally forgot once i was done with the video that i forgot to put heat shrink over the leads so i had to unsolder them all over again after the video was done then go ahead and reapply them to make your life easier just go ahead and take a picture before you disassemble it shouldn't take that long like i said it's very plain and simple you just unsolder solder back on like i already explained the hall center color code wires you just just realign them the same way i honestly do not remember because this i'm doing this on a different day i was supposed to upload this video like way long ago but i just caught up to it but I think the yellow or obviously the color coded wire, the main phase wire is going to be in the middle and I think the negative and positive are going to be on the outsides. Uh, I can't recall that, but yeah, just go ahead and take a picture just to make your life easier. The bitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, college educated, she graduated. Any bill she can't front her parents paid it. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I have the motor assembled. I have fast forwarded it. You know, it's already plain and simple to assemble the motor back all over again. So, as of right now, in the video, as you can see, I'm right now I'm actually soldering some XT90s to a battery I had sitting there because I needed to put some XT90s so I could go ahead and use this battery. But that's gonna be the end of this video, guys. Hope it was helpful. Like I said, it's pre pretty much plain and simple. You can't really confuse yourself. As long as you take those pictures, it'll help you and benefit you when it comes to re-putting it all back together. But like I said, the tapered edges gotta be facing towards the shaft itself. And the flat side has to be facing towards the coils. Because as the motor passes, it'll send a certain signal through those hall sensors to the controller to give it the next color and send a signal back. So, alrighty guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and like I said, stay motivated, and let's get it. They just wanna know where the planes at, planes at, yeah.